It's Mad Men Sports. Your Buffalo Bills are in the playoffs playing the Indianapolis Colts Saturday. 110 CBS 105. 105. David, Diamond Dave. What's going on, man? How are you? Big, big game this week. Big week. Big week. Have you gotten any sleep? No. I too excited for this game. I'm ready. Oh, who's this guy? I'm ready. We got a big week this week. Look at him go. AFC wildcard weekend. We wait all year for this, don't we? We do. And it's going to be a joyous, joyous week. Those are the two seed. First year, first time, long time. First year where there is not a two seed first round by. Uh, we feel a little cheated, don't we? Yeah, what a bad time for the NFL to enact an extra team into the playoffs. Yeah, and for the Colts, what a lucky time for them to enact getting a seventh team in there. Right. Congrats, you barely made it. I'm honestly surprised that we didn't really have to take advantage of that sixth or seventh seed. I'm not. <laughs> They're good. They are very the Colts good. Colts squeaked good. it. Let's be honest. Yeah. Um, but no, it's There's plenty be to talk about today. A huge opportunity to let the NFL know that the Bills are here to stay. And do you know what has stayed in our possession? We're trying for to the get rid of it. We're trying to give it to you. This signed Buffalo Bills football autograph. You correctly predict the game se- score Drop game, the game Saturday score in the comments. You will win this signed autograph football. Free we will shipping. send it out free of charge. Free we'll of charge. Refuse to send it expedited, but it will get to you. It'll still get there all the same. And I'll tell you what, you know, we got a big game. This is, you know, I have. This is for this is where for all the marbles. We start counting, right? These these are the games of the matter. Also, drop. Where are you listening from? We want to see. You know, what do we got going on here? I know I had some homies on the live from UK, from Mexico, from Chicago, all over the place, man. Absolutely. Drop where you're watching the game on Saturday from. We want to see it. We want to see how far Bills Mafia stretched out for this Saturday game. It's a big one. Colts coming to Orchard Park. Frank Reich's back. He is coming back. And a wild card game. And we're going to send him home on a fucking horse as sad as hell. I'm not worried about this game. Am I crazy? No. And It's a seven point, seven point spread. It might be seven and a half nowadays. Let me just check. People continue to say, oh, what about the Colts running game? Bills have struggled against that all year. Well, they haven't. They, Bills are going to do what they have done all year, and Let, that's score on pretty much every drive you have. Take the running game completely out. Do leave. Your the Bills had scored twenty eight points in the second quarter last week. Leave, do do your, it's, do your stat. My stat. The punt stat. Oh my gosh! So, Josh Allen has more total touchdowns than Corey Bajorquez has punts. Forty six total touchdowns for Josh Allen. Forty one. Total punts for Corey Bajarquez. So this game opened at six, went to six and a half, went up to seven. Then it had to come down, back down. It's sitting at six and a half right now. The over-under on this game is 51. Interesting. To, to talk about the Colts a little bit, they have old man Phillip Rivers. He doesn't worry you guys at all? No, he's no. five and six in the playoffs, and he's been to the playoffs plenty of times. And he always throws the ball weird. Yeah, his arm shot. He is. He's. I mean, he's as old as Ben Roethlisberger. These guys are old. He obviously, he's, he was drafted in the same year as Eli. He retired last year. He should have retired four years prior. You know, these guys are old. They're kind of at the end of their wits. Philip Rivers went to a dome for a reason in Indianapolis. Is it the RCA dome anymore? Lucas Oil Stadium. He went to Lucas Oil Stadium, right, because he couldn't handle the elements. Well. Welcome to Bilo. Yeah. Elements aplenty. I think the game temperature is like 29 degrees. A little overcast. Perfect weather for Josh Allen to really sling it. Yeah, if you're trying to escape the elements, this is a horrible game for Speaking you. Speaking of escaping, I got a Philip Rivers stat for you. What's that? Let's take a guess right now. How many times do you guys think he scrambled this year? Three. Once. Once. For he's, f- a, he's a Stonewall for Jackson. Three so yards. In week one, he scrambled for three yards. Beautiful. He is going to be a sitting duck in that pocket. And we know... We have Taron Johnson, Trey White, Josh Norman, Levi Wallace. I mean, keep, keep going. Jordan Poyer. Reminds, reminds me of Drew Bledsoe. It's a statue. Maybe a Dane Jackson. Dane Played Jackson. very well. We know how good our defensive backs are, right? Mm-hmm. These guys are studs. We probably have the best, best cohesive group in the NFL. Dean Marlowe. Two picks back-to-back drives two last week. Picks. Against Tua. Tuna. What about uh, he's cooked. Colts, so, Colts receivers. So I think in the grand scheme of things, your defensive backs can keep you know coverage as long as you need to. Well, let's get to the quarterback this week. And I have a feeling the Bills are going to be up 
21, 27 points by halftime. Got to get up quick. So they're not going to be running the ball. It's all going to be placed on Old Man Rivers' hands. Old Man Rivers, I like that. Shout out. Damn. Product placement, baby. No, it's... It's going to be a shit show for the Colts. So. Uh, Pascal Bennett, uh, T.Y. Hilton. Paris Campbell. Paris Campbell. Uh, he's out. He's been out for the year. Uh, their tight end, Trey Burton. Paris Campbell's still out. Yes. Yeah, fantasy. Uh, they have another tight end who we talked about yesterday. Jack Doyle. Jack Doyle, yeah. And their running back, Jonathan Taylor Thomas. Not from home improvement, but from what college? Wisconsin? Yeah. Wisconsin. Jonathan Taylor. Wisconsin. Jonathan Taylor finished the year third in rushing. I don't see an injury report oh. here for Paris Campbell. It's he's injured reserve. There you go. MCL. Bills might have dodged a bullet there. He's a threat. So those are their offensive weapons. Uh, Nakeem Himes. He's their yeah. catching running back. And I've, I've spoken to many Colts fans the past two weeks because I've kind of seen this matchup kind of coming to the forefront here for the Bills. If you stop the short dip dunk passes by Philip Rivers to Himes, Taylor, the stuff in front of you, and we know we can. I mean, we faced Melvin Gordon, what was it, two, three weeks ago now? Yeah. Philip or Philip Lindsay. We we've faced some great running backs last month, I'd say. You know, we had Blake Snell and who was the other guy? Not Connors, it was the other guy, but uh can't think of his name. And the plethora of running backs with New England. Exactly. I, the Bills have kind of come to task since the bye week. They've been nothing short of stellar. Well, we don't know if the Bills' run defense is fixed because we never need to know. We're always up so far in the game where they don't run the ball. Which, even if it's not, I don't see why that would be any different this week than it has been any other week. No. Well, we can talk about the Colts' defense real quick. They have, they do have a respectful pass rush that needs to be respected. Yeah, but you they look, do have the best linebacker possibly in the league. Their defensive backfield, I think, is one of the worst in the league, though. Yeah, but you look at the past couple weeks. I mean, there was one game. Where Josh Allen was touched once, once wasn't against sacked, the Patriots, like thirty six dropbacks. Yeah, I mean, the, as of late, the cohesion of the offensive line has been unmatched. Big word. Yeah, the, they've definitely gelled together at the perfect time. The whole team has gelled together at a perfect time. The Colts, speaking of the Colts defense, the Colts blitz seventeen percent of the time. That is the second lowest in the NFL. I can't imagine they're getting to Josh Allen this week at all. No chance. No. DeForest chance. Buckner, he set the. Franchise record for most defensive tackles sacks for the Colts this past season. Mm-hmm. And, and it, he's definitely a good player. They traded them, much like us, have traded their first pick for a player. Definitely worked out. I just think I have a Mitch Morris answer right there for you. You have Mitch Morris. You have John Feliciano. There's nothing more that you can ask for on the interior or what? This dude's all you need. Th- it absolutely. is. Absolutely. When, com- when it comes to since, interior pass rush, absolutely. Especially since Feliciano had been out a good portion of the year, and you definitely noticed that, specifically in the run game. He's fresh. He is certainly a pivotal point on this offensive line, and him being in the lineup lineup is not an understatement. I mean, think about it. He was out for, what, six, seven weeks? Maybe even eight, honestly, off the top of that. We missed him. He was he's fresh right now. I mean, he had his bye week not that long ago. He's these guys are yeah. ramped up. They're ready to rock and roll. This team is the hottest team in the NFL, Barn. A thousand percent. I, I think they're averaging what, 35, 34.5 points the last since the bye week? That's since the bye week. Forty points in the last three weeks, I think. Yeah, I mean these guys score. It might be even more than forty points. Our, our season is not ending by the Indianapolis. Twenty? No, it's not. And Twenty-eight points. We could sit here quarter. all day and tell you how good the Colts are, but we don't have to. Listen, I'll, I'll tell you a matchup that we want to watch: Xavier Rhodes versus Stefan Diggs. Both, both former teammates. They've gone up against each other numerous times. We have John Brown. I bet. How great was it watching John Brown catch that arc deep ball pass from Josh Allen against the Dolphins? Like, was, I thought the Dolphins were supposed to be good. I mean, I know they're not in the playoffs, but like. Chan Gaylor resigned today. The, we beat his ass so bad. I mean, think about it. They were the number one points against defense going into that game last week. They mm-hmm. left it fifth. Yeah. The last month of the season, they played the Colts, Steelers, and nope, not the Colts. The Patriots, Steelers, and the Dolphins. All were top five in points against. Once the Bills left with them, they dropped at least an average of three spots. Colts are up there. Colts are like the eighth or tenth of points against. I'm not worried. They're about to hit a free fall. This I'm offense is a buzzsaw. Brian Dable's looking for a job out there. He's about to put on a show. And I, I honestly think that this defense is going to put on a show as well. This defense is a well-oiled machine. I'll give you the stat. The Bills have not lost 
wouldn't it be amazing going into contract negotiations to say you haven't lost a game that I've played in all year if you're Matt Milano. Matt Milano yeah. They have unde- been undefeated in games that he's played this year. That's fantastic. What a stat. He's so good that Tremaine And he's Edmonds, played in 10 games. I mean, it's not like he's played in two games or something like that. Tremaine Edmonds is a different player with Matt Correct. Milano not on the field. Without a doubt. And even then, AJ Klein, what, what, won AFC Player of the Week twice or once at least? Yeah. I mean, AJ Klein has come to correct whenever he's been, he had his, you know, the the bell needed to be answered. Listen, this team is a Hail Mary away from 14-2 and two and not losing since October. Yeah, it's ever since that loss, ever since the bye week. And they've been better. The Bills are unstoppable. I mean, Without a doubt. There's not a team that can even hold a match to them. And I think the bye week, that, that Arizona loss really fueled this team. I think they realized, like, wow, we get, we can't let teams hang around anymore. I mean, we think about it, we had the close game with the Miami Dolphins at the beginning of the year. We had a close game with the – I mean, there wasn't a close game with Seattle. But, you know, the Rams, they let the Rams back into it. Yeah, and, Oh, that's the, credit to the coaching staff. Keep exactly. their head level. And, and now you, you get one of those games where, man, we let this team hang around too much. They're not a playoff team, as Deion Dawkins said in his article that he wrote say, up. Yeah. You know, that was the Cardinals Super Bowl beating them, and they realized, you know what, we got to start putting teams away because our Super Bowl – it's the, the Super, Super Bowl, Bowl, yeah. No, and if I can just take a second. Take a second. Deion Dawkins, that was a beautiful letter to the fans. I didn't read it. You should. Honestly, like, Mad Men's Sports or not, you should definitely read that. It's a beautiful thing. It gets you hyped. You should watch it, read it Saturday morning. Yeah. That's a hype piece right there. Big hype piece. <sighs> you know what gets me hyped? What's that? The Bills brought in my boy for workout this week. Yeah, Chad they, Kelly. They brought in Chad Kelly this week. Don't my guy. And I think that is nothing more. And I think fans kind of took it. Oh, just man. Wanna, just want to pick his brain. Yeah, I think they just wanted to learn some terminology for the Colts there. Some line checks. He was with them last Chad, season. Chad, I'll talk to you soon. He was with no, them all won't. last season. He was on the active roster in December. He, you know, I mean, come on. He, he started the season with them. He knows what they talk about. They know their line checks. They know their reads. They know their hot routes. This is a great move. It's really interesting how the... Kelly's allegiant alliance with the Bills versus Frank Wright. Yeah. Just don't let him near Chippewa. Well, I'll go to Chippewa with on, you. He's not on the roster. <laughs> so I don't care. And Chippewa is closed. He'll never be on an active roster ever. Uh-huh. That was a joke. Uh, Did you want to do some awards, Zach? Is that on your itinerary? Yeah, let's do some house cleaning because, you know, we should. We got a little longer podcast tonight for the fans. Definitely not that it matters nope. because <laughs> there's other things going on 13 here. minutes. Yeah. We got some other things going on in all honesty. So... We'll do this just okay, shit going on. We'll get this to go to get it out of the way because, you know, the Bills are better fish to fry in terms it's of eleven thirty. Yeah, too. the Super Bowl. Well, to them, it's in the morning, so yeah. no, it's not. Yeah, we don't really care. Listen, we're, we're going to clean this up now. Usually we do it at the end of the season, but we might have some other things to talk about at the end of the season. Yeah, we might have some other things. I have a, I have a feeling this year, boys. It's not like other seasons. Offensive offensive MVP this year. Who do you think you guys got for the offensive? Are you doing MVP? overall MVP? That's important for me. Uh, okay, Josh Allen, overall MVP. Let's all uh, Josh Allen, Josh Allen. Josh no, Allen? that's why I'm asking. All right, Jeez. so offensive MVP. Who do you got, Jake? Uh, I think. Hmm. What? Lee Smith. But in all actuality, Stephon Diggs changed the culture of the Buffalo Bills offense. Changed the perception of Absolutely. the Buffalo Bills. Not a doubt. Without a doubt, it's Stephon Diggs. Listen, Josh Allen can get all the improvements he wants. There's a direct correlation of the time Stephon Diggs stepped on this field and the yards per game, the points per game. I mean, it's a 10-point jump. Yeah, yeah, it's it's Stephon Diggs, and it's not even a question. Uh, John, John, and this is controversial, but Josh Allen would be a mediocre quarterback right now if it wasn't for Stephon Diggs. He nope. made him, yes, he made him no. that much better. No, Josh Allen's answering to the call. He's doing what he needs to do, but Stephon Diggs is just that damn good. Get him the yeah. damn ball every chance you get. Absolutely. Anyways, so yeah, I'm gonna go with my offensive MVP. Honestly, is probably Stefan Diggs. <laughs> I mean, it's really not. Right. This isn't hard to like. You know, you're not crossing wires here. Stefan Diggs, leader receiving yards, leader in receptions, and he did it by a wide margin. He is sixth in NFL history in receptions in a He's season. Got the cleanest teeth in the league. Absolutely, and, orange and he won by like at least 130 yards in the yards category. That's yep. a big jump in the NFL. Stephon Diggs came in and really shook up this whole team, whole offense. It was wonderful. Jake, who you got for your defensive MVP for the season, regular season? We might have to do other ones later. Yeah, so, and we've talked about it earlier. I think Matt Milano has to be the defensive it's controversial MVP. 
Well, I'll tell you this. I mean, it's an opinion. So Zach had already said the Bills have not lost a game with Matt Milano in the lineup and what he does to Tremaine Edmonds' confidence and play. It's unmatched. And I think we'd be in some really deep shit. And before AJ Klein kind of had it figured out, I think the Bills' defense wasn't a little bit of deep shit without Matt Milano. Yeah, when you consider AJ Klein, he was coming into a you know a system he was familiar with, but yet it was still a new system, new players around him. He had a lot to really you know chew off there. Yeah. Uh, mine is the man that's been disrespected all year by the entire league, and it's disgusting and pathetic. Jordan Poyer, best safety in the entire league. Leads the league and leads the team in tackles. I don't know where he stands with the league, he's but like six, he's no, just he's, he's just Eight. that damn good too, and he needs some damn respect. He's yeah, I don't have anything else to say. He's just that damn good. He's we want to be where we are in defense. We we would be still be the shitty defensive team, and we were the first four weeks if it wasn't for Boyer. Maybe I think Dean Marlowe could do his job for less money, but who am I? Who am I? I think it's Jerry Hughes. Listen, I, I, I go back and forth because I think Trey White is the best overall player on this team. I, I, I really, you can't give enough prop, props to Jerry, uh, Trey White. And Trey White springboarded Jerry Hughes' best career play against Denver. You know, he got that sack on Drew Locke after Drew Locke said Trey White's nothing to be scared of. Yeah. Well, boo. Bet. Because you got something to be scared of because he's all over your back. See, I, I don't think any offensive coordinators try to game plan around Jerry Hughes. Jerry Hughes is a mid thirties defensive end that, who does play well, but he's nothing more than Addison or Daryl Johnson can't do at this point. Right on, right on. So Jerry Hughes has an interception this year. You know, he's got two fumble recoveries, obviously one for a touchdown and you know, he's putting up four and a half sacks, which is one a half sack short of the lead, the season, you know, the lead for the team. That's great enough. And it, I mean, you're looking for difference makers. He's took, taken over at least two games this season when you really need someone to step up. Jerry Hughes, you need a pass rush on this team. You guys say it over and over. He's always provided. The Bills probably – the Bills haven't had this many defensive touchdowns, I don't think, in recent memory. Can not, you guys think of it? Not since um, – Past five think, years. I think it was 2014 maybe. Yeah. That year they had a lot. It, it's a Bird refreshing. had three alone. That's a lot longer than that. Yeah. He definitely had, I mean, 11 quarterback hits. Jerry Hughes has had a resurgence this year compared to his other years. And I think that comes with more help on the defensive line. I think that's Mario Addison. I think that's Quinton Jefferson and Verdon Butler. Whether you want to argue their individual performance hasn't been up to snuff, but I think that it kind of takes some pressure off of Jerry Hughes. So, yeah, and I, what you're saying. You know, just to give Trey White some love here, because I, I just don't think you can ever talk enough about him. Three interceptions this year. He almost had a touchdown against Seattle. His interceptions aren't just like running the mill picks. Those are huge, big baller plays right there. And, you know, we, we try to look at stats like how does this player perform versus the Colts? You know what I mean? But most of the time when these guys played the Colts last, they got smacked up against Andrew Luck that season in uh, Josh's rookie year. So mm -hmm. there's really no stats to write home about that. And obviously everyone remembers the snow game, but that was a lot longer than I think people remember. I mean, it passes defense. He for a while he was leading the league in passes defense. He had eleven this year. That's his third most in his career. I mean, I mean this guy comes to play. He's got it's one and a half two games this year too. Yeah, one and a half sacks. Trey White, Trey White, J Jerry Hughes. Now going back to this, Jerry Hughes, Mario Addison both started their career with Indianapolis. They were mm -hmm. teammates. Circle story. That's still a big trade when we got Jerry Hughes from Indy. Now they're going to end their season. And then, yeah, when I mean, when you trade Jerry Hughes, I was at the movie theaters. Kelvin Shepard, a, yeah. a, a, an awful pick from the third round LSU. Trade him for Jerry Hughes. Jerry Hughes becomes pretty much an all-time bill. Because another player that was a hothead on the team, which apparently is not a hothead on, on this team. You got unsung hero there? Yeah, he's had some moves. Yeah, who do you got for your unsung hero? We kind of just ran through the gambit of who's important. So this is a homer pick, but I'm going to give you a legitimate answer to why I think this. Lee Smith. I'm going to tell you why that he's one of the most underrated players on the Buffalo Bills. Obviously, we know that he doesn't have the capacity to be, to be like a Travis Kelsey, a George Kittle, but no one ever asked him to do that, especially with issues at the tight end position with Dawson Knox and Tyler Croft. Tyler Croft played well. It was out a couple games. Lee Smith rose to the occasion. I don't think that, rather, 
I think the Bills would have a much bigger issue running the ball. I think it would be more of a story if Lee Smith wasn't in this lineup. I do think it gives them an edge in the running game and in pass protection. And it's not like that he has bad hands. You don't see him dropping a lot of balls. Dare I say, he doesn't get a lot of balls thrown to him. But I, I think that he does bring a interesting cohesion to this offensive line. In fact, I think that the Bills are have only lost one game with him in the lineup. Yeah, I'll even go as far to back up your point there to say, listen, you get hit by Lee Smith once, and then you're going to second dead. guess going into that hole. That's, that's that simple. It's a big dude. You gotta get you dinner with Lee Smith. You gotta have dinner with that guy. I'm trying, man. I'm working on it. Uh, Lee Smith. It's a slow roll. Uh, my unsung hero is uh, he's the definition of an unsung hero. He wasn't even supposed to start beginning of this year. He's going to get paid, that's for sure. Darrell Williams is getting paid at the end of the year. He deserves to get paid. I would actually go as far as to say he's probably our best offensive lineman at the moment. Uh, he's just that damn good. Again, another player that's just that damn good. And there's really no argument with this one. Hear me out. Lee Smith usually lines up on the right side. Probably another reason why Darrell Williams is playing so well. Yes. With the help of Lee Smith. Darrell Williams plays every snap, though. Lee Smith probably plays 20%. 32%. But he gives 100, and that's what 110 matters. every play. Uh, my unsung hero is Tyler Bass. Listen, everyone wanted to bash him. Bass. Bash, bash. bash the bass? They wanted to bash him. Bass. No, but listen, a rookie quarter or kicker. Rookie quarterback. Oh, my God. <laughs> Throw him in. He's got a hell of a leg. Listen, listen, the rookie kicker came in here. First year broke Steve Christie's record. Of all-time points. All-time points for a Buffalo Bill. Listen, That's that, crazy. That's impressive. He's got a hell of a leg. And really when, I mean, he was really starting to get his footing in the NFL. It's definitely hard going from that transition off uh, college to uh, the NFL. I don't think you can find, think of a better season for a rookie kicker. Now, he had all those points, right? And he had two of those kicks that looked like they were good, but mm -hmm. just went over the uprights because his leg's so out of control. The first time I really started trusting Bass was against Arizona. Mm. That was the first time where I felt like, oh, he's just, he's been, he's, I don't want to drink. Don't, definitely don't want to jinx some playoffs as a different beast, but I don't think he's missed in a very long time. Besides, I think they rolled him out in Arizona for a long one just to try to get something yeah. before the half. I might not have him in that game, but that was the last time he missed. Huh. Uh, Tyler Bass has been an impressive addition, especially when we had Hauschka, who couldn't hit anything at a certain point. Yeah. I mean, almost automatic. I'll take it because I'm going to get, what, 10, 15 more years of Tyler Bass? The Bills... Special teams has been great this year. Corey Bohorka, Andre Roberts, all going to be an All Pro returner. Probably Isaiah all McKenzie. Uh, something game. that Bills fans are going to want to talk about. I'm sure this will be all over the chat. Uh, Beasley, easy playing. Yes. Yeah, without a doubt. I, I don't think he's missing this game. I think he sat out last game to play this game. I think Diggs, who has now missed limited in Tuesday's walkthrough, did not practice in Wednesday's walkthrough. I, he Diggs said, is without a doubt playing. He said he said today in his media time that he said he's fine. Don't worry about it. So perfect. Just give these guys some rest. Right? I actually yeah. think Beasley's not going to play this game. I actually think Beasley will sit out this game. No. Kenny Stills is signed and protected this week. Yeah, because you can't. They're protected because of the playoffs, right? Is that how that works? I will go as far as to say we don't even need him. You got Brown. You got Davis. McKenzie should play. He's Gabriel also Davis. And Diggs, I, I think our receiving core will be perfectly fine. Have Beasley sit. There's no reason to go out there. And you still have Moss and Singletary who put up yards. Actually, I think Cole Beasley is very important to this team, especially in the playoffs. Very important. He is Josh Allen's lifeline on third down. I'd rather have him against a better defense the, next uh, week. The bottom line, the Steelers aren't a better defense. No. The, the Colts are definitely... Oh. Well, the Colts are, unless something weird happens, the Colts are probably the best defense you're going to face in the playoffs right now. Uh, the Ravens say hi. Like I said, unless something crazy happens, it would it would be quite the crazy thing to get the Ravens in Buffalo. But even yeah. then, I'm not scared of the Ravens. I'm more scared of this defense finding out something about this offense. I think this, the Bills. I don't think you have to get the Bills to think twice about wanting to beat the hell out of the Ravens after how close they were last year. Yeah, especially Lamar in the playoffs is yeah. not. Well, is yeah. Listen, I I hope he has all the success, but. Not this week. And I hope I hope he beats the Titans and then goes down to beat the Chiefs. That'd be Plus, nice. with all the COVID outbreaks with the Browns. They're, it's it's crazy to me. That I don't think there's a the, chance that the Steelers are Their head coach is out. Game. How crazy is that? They made the playoffs and their head coach can't coach. Some people are it's just insane cursed. to me. It sucks to suck. Yeah, not our problem. Score? Our problem will be the Steelers next week. And Jake, and I'll what's take the score up. prediction this week? 45 to 10. Bills? Obviously. <laughs> David? 
Uh, 34-19. Bills. Um, put some thought into that, too. I'm trying to think of something logical. Because they're not going to run up the score then. You don't know. Well, it's a better than you guys are giving me credit for. I will say that. Uh, I'm you, not can saying, run, you can run all you want, but you can't throw. I'm not <laughs> saying that they're bad. I just think the Bills are the best team in football right now. Yeah, they're number two in almost every power ranking. One in most. Some yeah. two. Uh, I'll give you this. this Bills, 42. Colts, 10. I'll give them a touchdown somewhere. Nice. All right. Well, thank you for listening. We will see you next week. Saturday, Saturday night. night. Go Bills. Yeah, whatever. Depends on when your week starts. I don't know. Bye.